How you doing, miss? Hi, who are you? Good. My name's Norm. I'm from Friendship Baptist Church over okay. on West Shore Road. I just want to invite you to church. Thank you. No problem. You go to church around here? Yeah, I go to uh, the Catholic Church up the street, um, St. Rosa Lima. Okay, I'm familiar with that church. Well, look, uh, more importantly than going to church, miss, the question we ask everyone, if you died today, God forbid, are you 100% sure you'd go to heaven? Yeah, I believe so. You believe so? Okay. Yeah. What do you think it takes for someone to go to heaven? Like, what would you have to do? Just follow God, be good. Obey the commandments? Yeah. Stuff like that? Okay. Well, look, like I said, we're a Baptist church. Okay. We base all of our beliefs on what the Bible says. Okay. And the Bible makes it very clear there's one thing that has to change about someone in order for them to be saved, okay. in order for them to go to heaven. It's not the way you dress or the way you act or the way you live. Okay. It's what you believe. What you believe will determine where you spend eternity. So if you had a couple minutes, I could show you real quick what you have to believe specifically so you can know for sure you'll go to heaven when you die. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I can show you? Yeah. Okay. What's your name? Olivia. Olivia Norm. It's nice, nice to, to meet you. Me. Now, Olivia, what's your stance on the Bible? Do you believe the Bible's the Word of God or it's just the Word of men? I believe it's the Word of God. It's the Word of God, okay. So it doesn't matter what I say unless it lines up with what this says. Yes. This is the final authority. Well, the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. First things first, we all have sinned. We all are sinners. Now, if we've all sinned, the next question is, what's a sin? The Bible defines sin for us. It says sin is the transgression of the law. It's the breaking of God's law. Mm -hmm. God tells us not to lie. We lie. That's a sin. God tells us not to steal. We steal. That's a sin. The Bible even says the thought of foolishness is sin. Okay. So even when you have a foolish thought. So sin is when you break God's law. Okay. Now, I'm assuming that when you were growing up, your parents had rules and laws for you. Yes. You didn't just do whatever you want. No. No. They had rules. They had laws. Mm -hmm. Now, were you a perfect child? Did you just always obey their rules? No. No, you broke them from time to time. Yes. Like any child does. Mm -hmm. When you broke their rules, what would happen? You got in trouble. You got in trouble. There would be a punishment. Mm -hmm. Now, that same truth applies to God's laws, to God's commandments. Okay. When we sin against God, when we break God's law, there's a penalty. The Bible says in Romans 6, verse 23, For the wages of sin is death. So because we sin we will inevitably die. Okay. Now, everyone on this earth will die. That's because everyone on this earth has sinned. Okay. All have sinned, all will die. Now, when you and I die physically, our body will go on the ground. Mm -hmm. But that's not where our soul goes. Okay. Our soul can spend eternity in one of two places. It can go to heaven forever, or it can go to hell forever. Okay. And there's no in between. The Bible's very clear about that. Okay. Now, where would you want to go? Heaven. Heaven, of course. Like most people would. But the Bible says there's a dilemma in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, the latter portion of this verse, it says that all liars, doesn't say some liars, doesn't say many liars, it says all liars, shall have their part, where? In the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Does that sound like heaven? No. It sounds a lot like hell. Yeah. Which is the second death. God makes it very clear all liars will go to hell. Mm -hmm. He guarantees it. Now, I've lied before. Have you lied before? Yes. If I lied to you once, what would you consider me? A liar. A liar. Now, many people have this misconception that you have to lie many times to be a liar, or even habitually to be a liar. But let's apply that same logic to the sin of murder. You know, do I have to murder 10 people to be a murderer, or just one? Just one. Just one. How many times do I have to steal from you to be a thief? Once. Once. So, I only have to lie once to be a liar. The Bible says, whosoever maketh a lie. That's singular. That's one lie. We've lied at least once. Yes. That makes us, by definition, liars. Okay. So according to God, according to His Word, do we deserve to go to heaven or do we deserve to go to hell? Hell. Hell. Now that's a scary thought. That's a sobering thought. But do you think God wants us to go to hell? No. No. Because God loves us. Yes. Now God doesn't just say He loves you. He proves He loves you. Mm -hmm. And here's how He proves that. It says in Romans 5, verse 8, great verse. Right here it says, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So we've all sinned. Because of that, the penalty is death. Mm -hmm. All liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Because God loves us, here's what he does. Mm -hmm. He dies for us. He takes the punishment. He takes the penalty that we deserve, and he pays it himself. 
So the Bible says of Jesus Christ that he came to this earth. The Bible says God was manifest in the flesh. He was born of a virgin, lived a sinless, perfect life. He never lied. He never stole. He never had a foolish thought. He was the perfect son of God. And the Bible says that he performed many miracles. He healed the blind, the lame, the deaf, the dumb. He walked on water. He did many great works in the name of God. Yes. And he was eventually arrested, tried, and he was accused of many things, all false accusations. And he was eventually sentenced to death. Mm -hmm. And he would die on a cross. Now the Bible is real clear that Jesus Christ died for the sins of the whole world. Not just you and I, but for the sins of the whole world. So basically, Jesus Christ took all of your sins, placed them upon himself, and it was as if Jesus Christ committed those sins. Yes. So he also had to pay the penalty for sin, which was death. Therefore, he died on the cross for your sins, for my sins, for the sins of the whole world. Not only that, the Bible says he was buried in a tomb for three days and three nights. Mm -hmm. During that time, his soul descended into hell to pay for our sins. But on the third day, do you know what happened? He rose again. He rose again. And it was a physical, bodily resurrection. He showed the disciples the holes in his hands, the piercing in his side, and he proved to be who he said he was, the Son of God and God in the flesh. Yes. Now, Jesus died for everyone. Yes. But do you think everyone's going to heaven? No. No, because there's something we must do. Now, that's the age-old question. What do I have to do to be saved? Well, the Bible answers it. It says in Acts chapter 16, verse 30, the question is asked, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Now, does that say be good and thou shalt be saved or does it say believe? Believe. Believe. Does that say be baptized and thou shalt be saved? No. No. Does that say go to church and thou shalt be saved? No. Repent of your sins and thou shalt be saved? No. Obey the commandments and thou shalt be saved? No. No. It says all you have to do is what? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Now, that, does that sound like it's easy to be saved or hard to be saved? Easy. It's easy. A child could do that. Yeah. So if you went to hell, God forbid, Olivia, would that be God's fault or yours? My fault. Your fault. All you'd have to do was believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, notice how it says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's implying that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, do you believe, Olivia, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes. Now, do you also believe that Jesus Christ is God? Um, I believe He's the Son of God. Okay. Well, if I showed you in the Bible where it says Jesus Christ is God, mm -hmm. would you believe that? Yes. Okay. Well, it says right here in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8, But unto the Son He saith, Who's the Son? Jesus. Jesus. So this is what he says to Jesus. Thy throne, O oh what? God. Is forever and ever. So the Bible calls the Son God. You say, I thought the Son of God was the Son of God. Well, he is, but he's also God. Here's why. The Bible says that there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. So there's one God that consists and is collectively made up of three persons. Okay. The Father, the Son, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, okay. all of which are distinct and different, yet they are one God. Okay. okay? The Bible flat out said that Jesus Christ is God. Okay. Do you believe that? Yes. Okay. So, God in the flesh, Jesus Christ, died for your sins, he was buried, he descended into hell, and he rose again from the dead, and he says, all you have to do is believe on him, put your faith on him, trust on him, and you'll be saved. And that's it. And I'll show you two more quick verses to expound upon that, and I'll be done. Make sense so far? Yes. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, For by grace are ye saved through faith. We're saved through faith. That's believing. And that not of yourselves. Now let's park there. What does that mean, not of yourselves? Salvation is not based on your baptism. It's not based on your repenting from your sins. Okay. It's not based on your church attendance or your Bible reading. The Bible says, and that not of yourselves. Okay. Now if you knocked on my door... And you asked me if I was going to heaven, and I told you, of course, because I'm a good person. Is my faith on Jesus, or is my faith on me? On yourself. On myself. The Bible said, and that not of yourself. What if you knocked my door, asked me if I was going to heaven, and I said, yes, because I've repented of my sins. It's 
It's my faith on Jesus or on me? On yourself. On myself. What if I said I'm going to heaven because I've been baptized? No, it's on you. Right. What if I said I'm going to heaven because I go to church? That's on yourself. It's on myself. Now, those are all good things that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. They're things that I should do, but they're things that I do. Yes. Here's the issue. I'm a liar. You're a liar. Mm -hmm. We're both sinners. So if I'm trusting in what a liar does, if I'm believing on a liar, do you think I'm going to go to heaven when I die or hell? Hell. Hell. Because that's what all liars deserve. Yes. If you're trusting in yourself, Olivia, you're going to get what you deserve. Okay. And it's not heaven. Yeah. So you have to believe on someone that's perfect. Someone that's sinless. That's why you have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Put your full faith on what He did, not on what you've done, are doing, or can do. Yes. Make sense? So it's not of yourselves. And the Bible says right here that it's a gift. Now, who pays for a gift? The person who gives the gift or the person who receives the gift? The giver. The giver. Who gives you salvation? Jesus. Jesus. That means he paid for it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to work for it. You receive it freely. How? By believing on him. Yes. A gift is completely free. It's already been paid for. Jesus Christ died for you. Yes. Did you die for him? No. No. He was buried. He descended into hell for you. Did you do that for him? No. He rose again bodily for you. Did you do that for him? No. No. So he already paid for it. It's your free will choice to receive that freely or to reject that. Okay. Now, the good news is you only have to be saved once because Jesus likened being saved unto being born again. Okay. You've probably heard that term, that phrase before? Yeah. Yeah. Now, how many times were you born physically? Once. Once. And did you work for that? No. No. Your mom did all the work. Yes. So, likewise, being born again only has to take place once. Yes. And it requires no effort on your part. God did all the work and does all the work. Yes. Now, when you were born physically, you were born into a family. Yes. That's the same family you're in today. That cannot change. Mm -hmm. When we're born again, when we're saved, we become a part of God's family. You become a daughter of God. Mm -hmm. I became a son of God. That also cannot change. Okay. The Bible says <coughs> in John 3.16, it's the last verse I'll show you. Right here. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that's Jesus, that whosoever, what? Believeth. In him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, how long does everlasting last for? Um, forever. Forever. Everlasting life does not end. You cannot lose it. It cannot be taken away. So if God gives you everlasting life today, how long would you have it for? Forever. Forever. So once you're saved, you're saved forever. Yes. Now, a lot of people don't believe that, but that's what the Bible says. So if God saved you today, yes. and you never went to church, yes. would you still be saved? Yes. Yeah, because it's forever. What about this? Say you got saved today, you place your full faith on Jesus Christ and what he did for you, and you live a very sinful, rebellious life, you're flipping about the things of God, and you just don't take God's law seriously. Would you still be saved? Yes. Why? Because... Everlasting. Yeah, everlasting means everlasting. Now, what about this? Let's get a little more deep. What if you got saved today, a couple years down the line, you get involved with the wrong crowd, and you end up taking someone's life, which is a wicked sin? Would you still be saved? Um, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Why would you still be saved? Uh, because the Bible said everlasting right. life. Yeah. Now. You know, let's tackle the elephant in the room here. Okay. What if someone saved, say you got saved today. Okay. And then years down the line, you get very depressed. Okay. And you end up taking your own life, God forbid. Would you, as a saved person, would you go to heaven or hell? Um, hell. Hell. Now, if you went to hell, was it really everlasting life that you had? No. No. It would have been temporary life. Okay. Now, let me explain to you what a lot of people have confused. Okay. A lot of people, their argument would be, well, so you can just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and live any way you want to and still go to heaven? Theoretically, yes. But that doesn't mean that if you live any way you want to, there won't be consequences upon this earth. Okay. You have a father. Yes. He'll always be your father. Yes. What if you moved across country? Would he still be your father? Of course, yes. What if you never talked to him? Yes. He's still your father. Yes. What if you had a bad relationship with him? He's still my dad. Yeah. What if you don't listen to what he says? 
He's still my dad. Yeah, you can't change that. Yes. Now, once we're born again, God becomes our father. Okay. Same rule applies. Okay. We cannot change that. Okay. If we are flipping about the things of God and we disobey God's law, okay. God will punish us as his child, but he doesn't take away our salvation because our salvation is eternal. It's forever. We cannot lose it. Okay. So think about this. If someone that's saved commits murder, God will punish them on this earth. Okay. They'll go to jail. They'll lose their freedom. They'll lose their job. They're not going to be able to have a wife or kids. They're not going to be blessed for that. Okay. God's going to punish them for that, but they're still saved because they're still a child of God. Okay. They'll go to heaven when they die. Even suicide. If someone takes their own life but they're saved, there's going to be repercussions for that. Okay. Number one, on their family... How's that going to affect their family? Terribly. That's horrible. They're going to miss out on the future that they could have had for God. If I took my own life, you know, I'm not going to be able to be blessed in the future by God. I won't be able to have a wife and kids. I'm not going to be able to live to the full capacity that yes. God would have me to live. I'm going to miss out on that because of my sin. Mm -hmm. But I'm still saved. I still go to heaven. And there's examples in the Bible of men that were saved who took their own life, unfortunately. Okay. And the Bible says they went to heaven. Okay. Now, just quickly, quick overview of what we talked about. Okay. All have sinned. Yes. All will die. Yes. All liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Mm -hmm. The Bible says Christ died for all. He was buried and rose again yes. for all. And he says that all who believe on him fully will be saved. And that once we're saved, we're saved forever and always. Okay. We'll always be saved. Yes. Now... Like I said, all that has to change about you, Olivia, is what you believe. Okay. Now, I showed you in the Bible where it says Jesus Christ is God. Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. Okay. Do you admit that you've sinned before, that you've broken God's law? Yes. And you understand the penalty for that? Mm -hmm. What we deserve is hell. Yes. Do you believe Jesus Christ died for all of your sins? Of course. Do you believe he was buried and that he physically rose again from the dead? Yes. Okay. Now, what do you believe? What do you think someone would have to do to be saved? Just believe on Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Would they have to do anything else? No. Would they have to repent of their sins? No. Would they have to go to church? No. Would they have to be baptized? No. No. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Just That's it. Simple. Now, if God saved you today, how long do you believe you'd be saved for? Um, everlasting life. And could you ever lose that? No. Could God take that back? No. No. Because there's certain things God can't do, Olivia. And one of those things is lie. Yes. If I gave you this Bible forever, and I came and take it back, took it back, yeah. what would that make me? A liar. A liar. Now, God can't lie. Yes. So once he gives you something forever, it's yours forever, he can't contradict his character. Yes. So you believe that once you're saved, you're saved forever? Yes. You could never lose that? Yes. So even if you were to take someone's life or to, God forbid, take your own life, yes. would you still go to heaven? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now you changed what you believe. Yes. You want to be saved because when are you going to die? Don't know. You don't know. But you know that you eventually will. Yes. So when's the best time to know for sure you're going to heaven? Um, I believe now. Right now, while you're still alive. Today, right? yeah. Now, if you wanted my Bible, you would ask me for it. Yes. If God has a gift that you want, mm -hmm. if God has salvation, he wants to give it to you, the next step is to ask him for it. It's as simple as changing what you believe, telling God that, asking Him to save you, and in that instant, in that moment of time, you're saved forever. It's as simple as that. So before I leave, I could lead you in a quick word of prayer. Okay. I could pray, you could repeat after me, okay. and I could help you tell God that this is what you believe, ask Him to save you, and if you mean that in your heart, He'll do it right now. Okay. You want to sure. do that? Yeah. Okay. So just bow your head and just repeat this after me and mean this in your heart. Okay. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. I know I'm a sinner. I know I am a sinner. I know I deserve hell. I know I deserve hell. But I believe. But I believe. You died for my sins. You died for my sins. You were buried and rose again. You were buried and rose again. I'm putting all my faith on you. I'm putting all my faith on you. Not on myself. Not on myself. Or the things I do. Or the things I do. Please save me right now. Please save me right now. Give me everlasting life. Give me everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Now, did you mean that? Yes. Yeah. So, God forbid, Olivia, if you died tomorrow, where would you go? Heaven. Heaven. Why would you go to heaven? Because I believed. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Is there anything else you would have to do? No. No. So you're saved now. Yes. Praise God. Could you ever lose that salvation? No. No. No matter what. Now that's a great assurance, okay? Yes. Now, is that a truth you should hide or should share with others? 
Share with others. Share with others because what you know can effectively change where someone spends eternity. Yes. Dependent upon whether you tell them about that or not. Yes. Right? So God just gave you a great purpose to go and tell others what you've now learned yes. to save others. Okay? Yes. So more about the church. Our church is located over on West Shore Road. As I said, the address is here on the back.